Be very quiet, everybody. We don't want to startle it. It likes the fruit. I'll go. Huh? What is that? In recent times, even mainstream archaeology has begun to acknowledge that softer tissues can indeed petrify. I skipped over the first couple minutes of the video because I don't think they're super relevant to the overall discussion. Instead, I want to start here at this sentence because it's an interesting use of buzzword and eh, kind of right but not really sentences that really sheds light on this whole problem of mud fossils and biogeology as Stellium7, the author of this video, puts it. So let's play this back again. See if you can figure out what I really hate about this sentence. In recent times, even mainstream archaeology has begun to acknowledge that softer tissues can indeed petrify. If your guess was mainstream archaeology, you would be right. That does piss me off. But that's not the thing that's really getting under my skin. The thing that's really getting in my craw is recent times and begun to accept. Those sentences make it seem as though this bogus bullcrap on YouTube, this mud fossil research, is cutting edge, is where the science is leading. When in fact, since he gives no definition of recent times, what the fuck is he talking about? Is it past five years? Past 50 years? What does he mean by that, right? He's, in phrasing it as the way he, they do, with this nebulous terms and undefined characteristics, it gives mud fossil proponents the spectacle, the uh, idea, the picture of having some sort of credibility in their statements, when in fact they're kind of just talking out of their ass. Jack and shit, and Jack left town. This article is only a couple of months old and is talking about the find of vitrified brain. So vitrified just means turned to glass. And it says here, it appears that the heat was so immense, it turned one victim's brain to glass, thought to be the first time this has been seen. Experts say they've discovered that splatters of shiny, solid black material found inside the skull of a victim at Herculaneum appears to be the remains of a human brain tissue transformed by heat. You all know I love my sources. And well, unsurprisingly, Stellium 7 here doesn't even provide a link to this gaudy article. Down below, you find the actual study done. So you can read about this stuff more than just these couple sentences The Guardian decided to write. So to date, vitrified remains of the brain have never been found, said Dr. Pier Paolo Petrone, a forensic anthropologist at the University of Naples. So I, I believe that based on his statement that Dr. Petrone is unaware that there are at least two examples of petrified brains that have previously been discovered. One of them is this. This is a fossilized whale brain, which proves paleontologists wrong. This fucking whale brain set me on way too long of a trip through Google searches. Because I found the article he did. Of course, Stellium 7 just picked the first article on the Google list and didn't dive any deeper into what's going on here. But I found article after article and tracing back the dates and when the articles are published, I found the story to be weirder and weirder and weirder. Now, I'm in no position to say this is not a fossilized whale brain. I don't know. But... The story's weird. First of all, the person that found this fossilized whale brain in California is named, I shit you not, Pepper O'Shaughnessy. I don't even know if that's pronounced correctly, it's probably not. That is such a ridiculous name. Secondly, there's no actual published material on the supposed incredibly rare find. If this is a fossilized whale brain, holy goddamn, that is in wonderful condition. There's even a video of who appear to be, from my understanding, from my research, two actual uh, professionals in the field look at this thing for the first time, and it's really weird. Like, if this is such a major find in the video, again, linked below, shows their enthusiasm at this unique discovery, why is there never any published information studying this? All the articles say that these professionals looked at it, and oh, definitely it's a whale brain, but they never 
published anything as far as I can tell about it. Maybe I'm not looking the correct way. I'm not a paleontologist. But there's no links to any public published research studying this supposed rare and wonderful find. The closest thing I was able to find was that the guy that is at the center, the scientist at the center of all this, Howell, uh, presented a brain cast to a Society of Vertebrae Paleontology meeting in England. That's all I found on it. So I have no, I'm not going to tell you this story of this whale brain, fossilized whale brain is not true. And I guess I don't really know why it couldn't be true, but it's still really weird. Like the, in, the discoverer's name is Pepper Shanahassi or some incredibly, incredibly Irish name. Uh, she was using it as a doorstop. There's this huge background of her like trying to sell it to fund cancer research because her sister got in a car accident. This, you read about this whale brain, again, link down below. You read about this whale brain and the majority of the articles about the whale brain are the personal story of the person who found it and used it as a doorstop. And there's like a, a fight between her mom and a blog post in 2012 about how the person with the blog didn't know anything and the mom was upset and posted. It. It's all really weird. <laughs> so, again, big side tangent here, but I spent way too much time tracing this fucking whale brain fossil around. I'm not going to tell you this thing is fake. I don't know. I will tell you it definitely smells weird, though. If it's such a remarkable find, why can't I find some scientists doing a study on it? Quick postscript here before we continue. Upon further digging, it appears as though the family that owns the fossil is holding out for many millions of dollars for it and doesn't want to give it to scientists in order to do actual research on it. That seems to be the reason the paper hasn't been published. Likewise, there was another very well-preserved fossilized whale brain in that nearby vicinity from like in the 50s or something like that that was studied a bit more. So this thing does appear to be legitimate, but as you'll see when we get back to the mud fossil, Rid ridiculousness. It doesn't really do anything to help his case. This is an amazing specimen because brains don't fossilize because of their soft tissue. Soft tissue doesn't fossilize and so the brain is the first thing that deteriorates. To create a situation where this could get fossilized is unheard of. Most fossils are of skeletons and scientists don't think that a mass of soft tissue like the brain could fossilize. And an interesting twist and something that the mud fossil dude would have noticed had he went past that first fucking link on Google. The quote, scientists did not think a mass of soft tissue like a brain could fossilize, is not from Howell, the guy that everyone's been talking about at the center of this whale fossil conversation. That's by the author of the paper. The actual dude, Thomas Howell, and other people that have worked in this stuff are well aware that brains can fossilize in some way, shape, or form. Look at this paragraph directly above it that actually quotes them. So here they're talking about the heat involved and it says, this suggests extreme radiant heat was able to ignite body fat and vaporize soft tissues. A rapid drop in temperature followed. So that's what I'm talking about with the organs as well, that there's some kind of an extreme heat that's igniting the external tissues of the body, and then that simultaneously is heating the organs in their fascial sacs, and the, the tissue surrounding the organs is being superheated, and they're hardening like hard-boiled eggs. And now the mud fossil dude has lost track of his own video. The hell kind of connection are you trying to make here between fossilized whale brains and the brains found at Pompeii. Uh, I don't know where the connection is because whale brains can be fossilized and human brains can be turned into glass. Therefore what? 
The preservation of ancient brain remains is an extremely rare find, but this is the first ever discovery of ancient human brains remains, vitrified by heat, about 950 degrees Fahrenheit, produced by a volcanic eruption. So we can see here, this is clearly brain material. It's undeniable. This is a whale's brain. Oh my God, who the hell cares? The human brain and the whale brain have both been fossilized in different manner. Yeah, that's cool. I'm sorry your Guardian and Fox News links aren't aware that science is known about this stuff, but the article you talk about, the actual link, go to the references, he references previous studies on fossilized and preserved brains. This is not something that is unknown about in the scientific community. You're trying to play this off like it's some discovery you found. It's not. This is established science. Go to a paper, don't go to a pop science or whatever the hell the Guardian is pretending to be to get your information. Got different images from different angles covering the, the same findings. And you can see in here, look at this. This is literally turned to quartz crystal inside the brain. I believe that the reason the brain became vitrified is because the original brain tissue is composed almost entirely of fat. Looks like you're a born loser! What? Where did that come from? The human brain is about 60% fat, not almost entirely made of fat. But what does the contents of it have to do with the vitrification of the turning into glass? The articles you just got done reading say this process happens under extreme amounts of heat, which is why it happened at a volcano and not with the whale brains, which mineralized, turned as you say, made into quartz or whatever mineral that happens to be. You just read this, like, five seconds ago and you're already contradicting yourself? In the fourth and fifth videos of the Unveiling a Titan series, I present what I consider to be some rather compelling evidence in favor of the theory that the fatty tissues of creatures from small to titanic can be transformed to crystal or vitrified as they undergo the rapid petrification process, whatever it may have been. Did you catch that? It was fast. Vitrification is the process of turning something into glass not crystal. The atomic structure that we associate with glass is by definition not crystalline. They are not the same thing. At all. At all. In the fourth Titan video, I also show that the red blood cells, when highly concentrated, are transformed to iron ore in the petrification process. So if that's true, we should have iron ore on the fossilized whale brain, right? But we don't. We should have iron ore in the glass and the Pompeii victims. But we don't. So how does that work? Does blood, fo does blood fossilize into iron ore only when it works for you, but not in all these other examples? If you based the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. Take a look at this rock. It looks a lot like one hemisphere of a brain swing and a miss <laughs> in which the fatty tissue has crystallized swing and a miss oh yeah swing and a miss swing and a miss, no. swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. though the folds of the brain aren't defined as they are in these other pictures the overall form is there that's not how it works that's not how any of this works there's way more to being a fossilized brain than having an oblong shape way more the fact that everything you asked for being vast majority fat which it's not missing the crenulations on the brain not doing any actual research all of these things point to you don't have a fucking half of a brain in your hand all of it but that's irrelevant because that's actually doing something as opposed to whatever the fuck you do i guess you make youtube videos and i make youtube videos so i'm not one to judge but still Bullshit science. If we take a look at the blood flow through the brain, we can see that it is most concentrated centrally. 
and specifically around the corpus callosum. In other words, if we were expecting to find iron ore in a petrified brain, it'd be in this region that it'd be most likely to be found. So take a look at this and note the shape and distribution of the iron ore. Lots and lots of problems here. One, just because it's reddish doesn't mean it's iron. So get that out of the way off the top of your head. Two, the bottom of this rock that you have, that doesn't look like veins at all. It just looks like a big splotch of some other mineral. Three, the actual fossilized brains we have don't have what you're asking. The whole point of this video is, look at these fossilized brains, look at this rock in my hand, they're obviously the same, and every argument you've made as to how they're the same has failed. It's missing all the components you want. It's got a little bit of red mineral on it. That doesn't make it a fucking brain, it doesn't make it fossilized blood. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs.